Hey, Annie. Thanks Hi. for joining. Hi. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> so there's a subject matter of creativity, source creativity. We couldn't pick a bigger potential subject out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, broad scope. But obviously, there's things of nature that it's, I believe it's inherent and it's not unique that we each have this, but it is unique how it's expressed. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in the window there, there's a, it matriculates through us, it filters through us mm -hmm. in some way, shape or form, mm -hmm. and comes out in real life form. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I also think too, that creativity in a sense, sometimes people hear the word creativity and that's even interpretive, subjective, objective. And if you think about or there's even an idea of you hear of a creative and you think of just somebody, this musician or some famous artist, and it's almost distant from you. But there's real creativity. There's real magic in the day to day, even in the mundane. Creativity comes out in all shapes and forms, even in cooking or could be physical activity, writing. The expression is there's no bounds to it. So as a source creation or just as an expressive creation, do you have a little bit of thought just about that that very subject matter? Just to kick us off and then we'll riff into yeah. seeing where that goes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm super excited to talk about creativity because it's taken a lot of forms for me specifically. From a small child, I was always drawn to nature and rocks and the stars. And I always felt sort of a connection to that and wanting to arrange stones that I collected in Michigan. I'm from Michigan um, to leaves and sticks and all sorts of things. And so arranging them into different mini little sculptures that kind of... Yeah, little patterns. Yeah, that felt fun for me. Yeah, that was that. definitely something that I started with. And then I actually did go to school for art, for cool. art education. Yeah. And so yeah. that was something, it, my career hasn't taken the path of art, but it certainly has become a part of my life. So creativity has been both um, evident in the things that I create as in traditional art. So I love painting and ceramics and arranging and photography, but also creativity, I feel, Sometimes we can get stifled by the term, like you said, creativity yeah. it has to be this or it has to be that. And it's definitely not I, the case. That's a really good point. No, I think there's a good point in that, that, that thought train, because I think there can be a rigidity or a dogma built around creativity too. And I would imagine it's really interesting because I, I have no schooling in, in the arts, of course, like in a classical art sense or yeah. in a formulaic art. I too, I love photography, mm -hmm. capturing that stills, capturing the angles, just the rules of three and just having some people have a little bit of an eye for that, which is mm -hmm. just fun. But it sounds like even at an early age with the, I like the idea that you were putting sticks and rocks and leaves in a little form, little art formations. There's yeah. probably some deep little shamanic healing connection there. Maybe I don't oh, know. Oh gosh. I hadn't even knows. thought of that, but absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So there could be. So in say like a formal school setting. Okay. I got a few different levels of this. So mm -hmm. one I'll ask, did you feel like there is a sense of when the, like in a school setting, is it sent like a formulaic or is it all theory or I guess Gosh. what was some of the influences and in probably a lot different. It's so okay. funny because I actually feel constriction when I think about going to art school. I feel like the tightness in my chest. Sure. I hadn't really actually said that before, but it's so true. Yeah. This is just from my perspective. Okay. So everyone yeah. has their own perspective. I went to art school because it felt right for me at the time. And so it felt right for me because I knew that I had a lot of influence from, I didn't understand them, but it was from outside of me. And I have a lot of things that I find beautiful that necessarily aren't traditionally beautiful and, or create like an emotion inside of me. And so in going to school, I was this, like all of us are for many different careers. I was very bright eyed and bushy tailed. And I had this idea in mind of how it was going to go. And yeah, it definitely didn't go yeah. that way. And so there was a lot of rigidity. There was a lot of, for me, there was a lot yeah. of rigidity. There was a lot of, I was, you know, afraid to do the things that I wanted to do or ask the questions that I needed to ask. And again, it's all confidence in my interest. I believe that interests yeah are what guides you to like that next 
phase or that next awakening or the the next thing. And so creative urges are something that's been a part of my life forever and it still is. It's just surfacing yeah. a little bit differently. So yeah, for me and my type and I yeah. look at human design and I would say that it was a little bit stifling and I've, I learned some technique, which is super fun for me, but it wasn't the depth that I necessarily needed. Now right. I've found that through life experiences, through creativity. That makes complete sense. It's interesting because there's, I think, and here, I'm not going to guess at why and what you went to school for. Mm. I'm just going to put myself in that spot. I would yeah. see myself as feeling, expressing creative qualities in an art form and then trying to seek, maybe not understanding what where the boundaries are, or where I can express myself, or the really understanding maybe at a deep level, there are no limits, but actually trying to put form around it. I think this is going to lead to a couple different things. One yeah. is, I think there's also a sense of, I'm going to get real earthly for a second. There's also it. a sense of like career path. We got, yeah, you go to school, then you go to school and you go to school <laughs> and, then there's, yeah. and you're seeking through that. And it's interesting with an art school thing. I'm just placing it out there. Everybody has their different paths. Some people are probably very intentional with it. Some mm -hmm. people, maybe it was just more of a flow and a calling to it because I, there's an expectation built up around it. Now, mm -hmm. two things. One is I would almost be really nervous about going to some type of formal school because I feel like the influence and the love and the attraction to the free form creations that I'll create, if it's art or if it's photography, and somehow I'll lose the essence of where I started. Yes. And because there's somebody else's rule sets that are going to be implied and imposed on me. Now, there's probably the other side of that coin is that once you learn some maybe methodologies, some processes, maybe it also can break open and you can start to give yourself permission to explore within those windows. Mm -hmm. But I, I think as an individual, depending on what you're going through an intention, and I brought it to the back earthly, is I guess you go to school because essentially the, the traditional is you go to school because you want a job in a, either a specific field, some type of output. So then you apply, I'll just simply put, how can I make money at this? Now all of a sudden it turns into that. And that's a different trajectory than understanding and breaking open and le learning examples, models, learning from other previous artists or top level performers in that. Yeah. Uh, to break open the creativity and the free flow of it versus going in at as a business to learn maybe the technical side to apply to something that's going to turn around for dollars. Now, I didn't really ask a question in that window, no. but does something in there resonate? Tons. Yes. On the sides. Okay. Yes. Again, all of this really is through my lens. And so there's some individuals that I feel are called to learn a technique to get out of them what they have building up inside. And a lot of it I feel actually is influences from their life and or like a download for lack of a better term. And they just don't know how to get it out. And so school is a perfect way to do that. Now, does money come from it? Sometimes it does. If you know the right way to get it out, that's a whole other conversation for me. I think that the art piece of it was just what I knew how to do. And I was just naturally good at it. Now, the school, I think for me, again, it ended up not being the thing that I have professionally made money at, but I will say that the creativity side of it and learning about my own personal sort of censorship or being held back is a life lesson. And so it started in college. I had a, for example, I had a professor in my sculpture class. Sculpture was my thing in college. I had a professor in, in college that told me. You can't say these things nowadays, but he told me that, or maybe you can, but he told me that I needed to try harder at creating what it is that I was trying to create because he didn't understand women's art. Oh my God. Okay, cool. So oh my God, I that's mean, messed up. In some, <laughs> it's messed up, but it's like the old school football. Up. It's like it's the not... old school football coach mentality of try harder. It's really weird. It ticked oh me off at the time for sure. Um, but. It was a pattern that has surfaced in terms of, I don't understand huh. you. You're going to have to explain it better, for lack of a better term. Yeah. And then I'm able to do that. So just because I have stuff inside doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to flow out in the way that others resonate. And what I've come to understand now is like, that's okay. 
(laughs) And so the creativity isn't always for others. For me, there's two forms of creativity. There's the creativity that I express just for the joy of it and the the wonder and the, to use your terminology, like the stream of consciousness. And it's taken me a really long time to enjoy that side of it and to see the sort of like the sort of like estuaries flow out of me, they're going to lead to a bigger pool of water eventually, but I don't have to know right now. And so a lot of what I learned, the technique, yes, but also the things that I like, don't like how to create in my best way and how not to, how to block myself or how to unblock myself. Those are all things that I did start to learn when I was in art school, but yeah. also in the school of life when I've fallen on my face or when I've been the happiest and all of that. You really touched on a number of different things. One, I love that term self-censorship. And it's not that I like it because <laughs> it's a good term. It it's resonates, just, it, I'm sure. <laughs> it resonates in so many ways because yeah. we do self-censor. And then that professor, that's Totally wrong. There's no way, shape, or form that that he was, any of that. It's really jerk, weird because that's for sure. There's an implied whether it's in that case it was directed as a female. Yeah, it and was. it wasn't even true sense of like feminine energy. It was just female. I yeah. don't get it. But then it was like at that point too, and I'm sorry to barrel down on this, but is it because it's not commercially acceptable? Is it because there's these things like I can't see this replicated and sold in a store or something? There's these weird things I think people have, yeah. and then they're going to pressure test the environment or imply onto yourself like they're doing you some favor. Yeah. So you know, be within the lines. Now, so that self censorship mm-hmm. is a really fascinating one because I know that we do that. Yes. And where are the influences? Now, sometimes it's not always necessarily a bad thing because maybe it's just you questioning it. Maybe self-censorship isn't the right form. I'm not saying what you were saying. I'm saying like maybe the right thought process. I need a moment to even intentionally procrastinate on this. And it is coming in the form of Mm self-censoring. But for some reasons, it's not congruent with what the initiants of this vision had. Or So it's not always that it's Everything is a total negative on the self-censorship, but self-censorship yeah. is obviously coming from somewhere. There's an influence exterior yeah. of yourself, somebody's rule set, subsets. Now you've implied them into your creations yeah. and you're censoring that process. So that's a really interesting thing you said. And there was one other one too. You were talking about estuary. I love it. Where I, you just, I love how you just flowed that out. That's incredible. And then, but it was almost like, and I'm going to paraphrase because you said something about going to the lake and I don't need to know how what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And that's a really cool, that in essence in those are those flow processes, even too, is I'm not going to make it about myself, but even things like they're doing these creative outlets of the channel Mm -hmm. that I'm trying to create with some of these videos about creation. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're going to go. Yeah. And when you don't have that strict agenda built around something, there is no, I'm just going to say there really is no failure because there's really only upside. Sure. Maybe at some point in this capsule, what I'm talking about, sure. Sometimes I'm going to say something smart. Sometimes I'm going to say something stupid. Maybe there's a couple extra ums, but overall there's only an upside because there's nothing to sell. So I'm using that kind of as an example of somebody's going to create an even initiative or mm-hmm. there's something beautiful in their mind that creates, I'll jump into a little bit of a train of thought, but it creates a, let's say a desire. And essentially, in a desire state, there really is no weights or measurements. I want a sandwich. I want a big house. Or there's really at that stage. And then you do, then you go into the internal work and then the external seeking and you go through the decision making process and the building, understanding and bridging the gaps in those. In some ways, too, that that creative process is really indicative of how we approach a lot of different subject matter. And I'm going to go back to what I said in the very, very beginning where it's, Creativity at its source is not unique because we all have it, yeah. but it's expressed uniquely. And somewhere in those filters, in those implied rule sets that were imposed upon, and and it comes out and it changes throughout our life. Now, that little girl you talked about who was placing stones and rocks and leaves, and I'm going to guess, I don't know, somewhere along the way, maybe some of that felt silly, but then I think there's a coming back to home at source as we go on and as we become more secure with our human beings and Mm -hmm. and free flow, free form. I'm going to guess at this stage in your life, you could probably find yourself arranging rocks and sticks and leaves again. And and really, I really do. Yeah. Yeah. But it was probably a period, I'm going to guess again, I'm probably, there was probably a period in your life that maybe that was something that didn't serve this last 
portion of your life. And you're like, no, that's silly. I need to do other things. I need, <laughs> yeah, I, I have responsibilities, expectations that I, and I need to fulfill those. A hundred percent. So the whole sticks and leaves and photographs of things or little sketches of things can be a metaphor for a lot of Absolutely. lessons within my life about expectations that have been put on me from others. And then also expectations that I placed on myself. And so that sculpture teacher, I see it as a gift at this point, even though he really was a jerk. But that's it's usually it. how that's- it's formed. The gifts, the gifts come, they don't come always wrapped cleanly and nicely. The gifts sometimes come in a steaming you know, pile of steel we pile, yeah, bag of dirt. <laughs> and so I, I think that having the interest in creating whatever it might be, or having the inspiration to find something beautiful, or having the inspiration to explore a feeling more in a way that isn't just inside of our mind and it comes out of our physical body, whatever that might be, that's creativity. And so it can be in a business setting, and I've used it often in a business setting in my career life, in being a mother, how I communicate, the way in which I arrange my home, how I plate my food, all of it really is creative. And so it's really surfaced in so many ways. And so I've stopped censorship I I was saying it in a negative way, but I love how you talked about it being not so bad when you pause. And so I think that the other sort of thing that I'd like to say about that is that oftentimes, at least when I was going to art school, right? So you think of creatives and you think of the destructive creatives, right? So like the Kurt Cobain or Scott Weiland, or those are just musicians, but so many, even Vincent Van Gogh chopping his ear off. And so those are the ones that get so much attention. And there's a lot of, I think, pressure that the emotion has to bring forward the art. And I would say that for me, a little bit of that emotional wave is opposite for me in terms of my creativity. I find myself being very centered when beautiful things flow for me. I find myself being very still and quiet and almost at peace. My sort of happy place is a peaceful environment. And I get a lot more creative when that happens, when life is wild and crazy, or I'm in an emotional wave of sadness or upset or grief. Most of the time, and I'll say most of the time, that is a block for me in terms of creativity. Because when I'm in fight or flight mode, I don't feel creative at all. And so I'd like to say that is one of the things of creativity that I feel is so important in terms of a self-care to allow the creativity to flow out of us, no matter who it is. If you consider yourself an artist like myself or just a creative human, like you said, all humans are creative. Being in flight or fight typically is not going to be the best way to allow it to, to, to exit out of you and be expressed. Yeah, you nailed it. That's beautiful. <laughs> because you. there's that idea of the bold creative and there's the destructive creatives, but then there's the Picassos. And you just hear the greats, yeah. whatever, quote unquote. Yes. And there is that sense of chaotic or frenetic energy mm-hmm. that can build up around that idea. But I really think you're dead on with- It's not me. <laughs> not it, me. This comes in a place of, of, it really generally comes in a place of peace. I would imagine that even those artists, mm-hmm. when they were in true creation mode, they were centered, they was calm, they were in their states of flow. Yeah. And on the periphery, there was tortured artists who came in the other forms and uh, around that edge. But there was actually something too that reminded me of a quote- and I think I'm trying to think if I, I'm going to butcher it. I'm, I might have it right. It's it's Somerset. I write only when inspiration strikes. Fortunately, it strikes every morning at nine o'clock sharp. <sighs> so it's yeah. There's a discipline to it too. But mm-hmm. I would say that the le- another level on top of showing up is actually creating a safe space. So that's I'll just call it. I don't really necessarily like the con- word control, but you're controlling your environment. You're creating that window of time. And in this day and age, it's it's probably silencing the phone and the emails and the notifications. Mm -hmm. If you have kids, it's just there's a case of mommy time. And I would just need that. I need this window. And I think there is something to be said with consistency. Now, it's if you're forcibly trying to do that, because I say that I almost had a little bit of anxiety built around it. I'm like, I'm going to go in this room and just create. And it's like, (laughs) I think there is a sense of consistency and that discipline and I don't want to say discipline in a sense of rigidity because it's a rule set. I mm-hmm. think it's just creating a safe, 
either time or mm-hmm. create a safe, sacred space for yourself. It could be a space in a house or whatever the that intention. is. It's that intention that you're placing. Yeah, absolutely. Have you read the book, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron? I have not. No, okay. The Artist's Way. I'm going to so write it down. It's, it's a beautiful book. I think it's a very spiritually minded book. Julia Cameron is an icon. She talks about morning pages. Okay. And so every morning, and I do not have this down pat, so I'm just putting it out there, but morning pages, you take three pages and you start writing about the things that you, it's like an automatic writing thing, but Mm -hmm. she talks about intention and she talks about just doing it every day. It starts to flow from you. And so I think she tells a story about she was a songwriter or a, fr- no, a friend of hers was a songwriter and she was blocked and blocked and Julia guided her to go write. And she came back or no, it was actually Julia. She came back and she had written this beautiful prose and it ended up becoming quite something. And then there's another book and I'll probably think of it at some point, but essentially it, it is a right from a writer's perspective of you put your butt in the seat in which you wish to embody. If you are a creative looking to infu- like more fully embody your creativity, whatever it is, I'm not talking about any form of art or anything, whatever that creativity is in your form, putting yes. your butt in that seat to embody it consistently will help you more fully embody it. And I believe that the universe, God, however you view it, responds to that intention. And if your intention is to make money, it it might be blocked a little bit. But if your intention is to give that gift to the world when you're expressing it, it's going to open up more channels for you. And I believe that the universe will open up more channels for you, allow those ideas to float to you. There's one other book that has been really helpful for me as a creative, and it's called Big Magic. It's written by Elizabeth Gilbert. She is a writer. She's a full-time writer, and she wrote the book Eat, Pray, Love. That's what she's best known by. But this book really truly is about creativity in that there's ideas floating around. And so how many times have you had an idea and you didn't act on it, and then a couple years later or something, that was my idea. I had that idea. And so her sort of hypotheses is that there are these creative things that flow through us. And sometimes it is outer worldly, if you will. I don't know how to say it the right way, but it comes. It's it's in the field. It's in the field. There's a lot of work on around. Such a good way of saying that. Yeah. And so it will come through us at the right time, but we have to put action to it. You can't just say, oh, I'm a creative. You have to have that consistency, like you said. Yeah. The touching on the field, though, too, there's a lot of work out there, too. And I I can't cite the books or the studies or anything like that. I don't studies in history inventions Mm -hmm. being created about the same time that are in siloed locations. Yeah. Even to like the plane, the automobile, a lot of those were actually created in other locations like France and the U.S. Interesting. and, And separate from. Now, was there some type of an exchange or an influence prior to that created some inspiration? There is quite a bit of that that I've heard before, and I don't have enough information behind it to cite anything right now, Mm -hmm. but it it does make complete sense. And this is also too, whether it's from the field, Mm -hmm. if it's sourced from us. So is creativity in this sense, is it I don't like this word, but is it a servant? Are we using it or is it driving it? Is it those sources? Where is it placed on the line? Are we harnessing it? And what are those inspirational ideas? I think it's all encapsulated because the word creativity is a broad spectrum. (laughs) Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So segmenting, then if you try to thin slice it, you can, I I think that sometimes it's a driving force. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a beautiful dance partner. Mm -hmm. uh, And sometimes it, you, act just stream of consciousness and the creation comes at the end you're like oh my gosh this is something i didn't even intend to get this and now i have this really cool and it was almost done in kind of an an automatic way i think creativity a lot of times is a messenger whatever that might be and a messenger can be a driver a messenger can be an emotion and a messenger can be a new way of thinking whatever it is but creativity is a messenger and how we see it. I like that a lot. Thank you. How we see it 
truly is through our own lens and who can see our creativity is through their lens. We have so many different ways and modes of, and so that's where, again, I think myself, I'm drawn to you know, actual art, physical art, fine art, however you want to say it, woven baskets, things like that. It tells a story and it creates a, a period of time for me that helps to relay a message. Songs transport you into a message. There is a sense of, I was picking up on that, is that, that expression. Let me ask you this, because I do have a thought, but I want to ask you first on back going back to school. And I want to actually get into a little bit of formu- earthly sure. uh, formulaic Please. process. Did you go through things like color coordinations or rules of the, there's, you hear about the rules of three, some type of methodologies yeah. and stuff. Did they, some kind of structural, because I, I, there's a little bit of correlation I'm, I'm trying to put together in my mind, but do you remember a few of those? I, of course I do. And so that a lot of that was probably a little bit younger in my days, but we were sure. talked, you spoke about or learned about composition, what makes a good composition, and the, that would be the rule of three, and then just the various sort of color combinations that make things pop, if you will. I would say that probably more in things like graphics design and uh, like a, a little juxtaposition bit more. or a mm. contradiction or something like that. Yeah. And so I would say that having contrasting colors and there's studies on psychology and how to em- emote from the viewer. And again, that yeah. would be a little bit more in commercial art. But yes, I learned about all of those types of yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> I think what it is, there's a string here and I don't know if I'm unraveling it effectively. So we okay. might even have to explore it in another video. Okay. But I think it really does tie into the the psychology of expression Mm -hmm. and receiving of the art. You paint something. I don't know if you do abstract or, okay. Okay. So you're capturing this true essence of something that came through you or came post while it was in real time while it was happening. And as it comes together, there's an emotional capture. Now it's received by, by me. So now I have this correlation in these the psychology response that I'm going to view it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So that creativity is interesting how it passes along too and is shared. I'm jumping just a little bit. I like the idea of the messenger because the messenger doesn't stop necessarily with you Mm -hmm. in this sense. I see your art. It invokes a thought, an emotion, Mm -hmm. a mood, whatever that is, Mm -hmm. be it big or small. Mm -hmm. But that messenger carries on and it might carry on in a different form. Absolutely. Through me next. That beautiful exchange, and it never dies. It transpires and continues and travels through many people, many forms. So I think there is a sense of, I'll be silly for a second. The, there's a tree, make a sound if nobody hears it. And and I guess if art isn't shared at some point, does it stop that? Does the creation stop or does it really contribute? Cause it exchange back to the field, like we said, and share in that way. So I just think that there is a sense of where I'm going with it is that creative water that's flowing through all never dies. And it did it ever start at that point. So is it continually circulating? And it's it's definitely, definitely circulating. I love all that you just said. And I have a pretty powerful story from some of my own actual physical art and my creativity, it, there is definitely a dry spell for me in creating hands-on paintings and art. And I think, again, a lot of it was really due to being in a flight or fight mode for so long mm-hmm. that I had stifled it, but it started creating again. And my father passed away. He was dying of cancer. And so for a long time, I was, long time, for several weeks, he was in the hospital and it was driving. It was a good hour and a half drive for the, to the hospital. My father was one of the biggest proponents of me creating art. He was a photographer, was a very handy man, but he had a, a lot of creativity in him as well that he expressed. And he loved it that I did it. And so I was driving to him when he was in the hospital. He was in hospice in the hospital. And I had I'd been thinking about this painting. It was a large painting that I have and it wasn't finished, but I didn't know what I needed next. And so I'm driving, probably crying because I was pretty sad about my father. He was about to pass away and he hadn't spoken in about two weeks. At that point, his eyes were sealed shut and he had a breathing tube in. I was the only person 
going to see him that night. It was after work and in my car, it was raining and it was just one of those days that you hear about people mm-hmm. talk about. Yeah. And it hit me. It was like an immediate download. Years prior, my dad had written this card. It was a Christmas card. I had been going through a divorce and he wrote on this Christmas card, this saying that it, it was just like, I looked at him, I'm like, dad, did you write this? He's yeah, I can write stuff like this too. And so it was his creative moment where he wrote this saying where it said, the moments lived in the spirit of love are the ones worth living or something along those lines or the moments expressed in love are the ones worth living or the ones that you remember most. I can't remember it right now, but because I'm yeah, it's like beautiful. on the spot, I mean, but the it's essence of it. Yeah. Is, yeah. And I was like, dad, you did this. And again, he's a baby boomer, fix it sure. guy, like hands dirty in the gravel and the dirt type of thing. But he was also very creative. And I thought to myself, because I loved his handwriting. I love looking at people's handwriting. I'm going to take this. And this is me driving down the highway in Chicago. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on over top of the painting. And I couldn't wait to tell my dad this when I got to the hospital. Again, hadn't spoken, nothing. I told my dad about it. I said, dad, we're going to create something together. And he opened his eye and he looked at me and the next day he died. (laughs) It was like, I knew that I had this to help him show that he was still around and it hangs above my door and my son loves it and he wrote that as his like famous or his favorite saying at school and like his creativity has continued he didn't know that this is what was going to happen but he heard it he knew it and then i think that helped him because he held on for way longer than he should have he didn't want to die But I think that understanding that there was this connection that was going to continue, it helped him to feel like, I'm not going to die. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. That is the essence of what we were just talking about, that it carries on. So that love lesson, that creative outlet that he gave, Mm -hmm. carry on. And even to whoever sees this, the energy of that transfers. And Um, the saying really is and it it is the moments done in the spirit of love are the ones worth living and i was like ah gosh that was like that is very yeah because even capturing the sense of a moment means in the present yeah absolutely yeah that's incredible i think you know what i think we should round it out here i I think that was an incredible time talking about creativity and i definitely want to do this again with you thanks for holding Um, this space with me i appreciate it absolutely Mm -hmm. absolutely All right. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Annie. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. You too.